And Alberta Premier Daniel Smith is with me now from Dubai and the COP28 Climate Conference. Premier, welcome again. My pleasure. I want to ask you about uh, the federal energy minister, Jonathan Wilkinson. He says uh, the methane regulations uh, resemble the 2025 plan that your province signed on to. He says that uh, methane emissions shouldn't have come uh, as a surprise, this federal plan to cap. He calls them an easy and cheap target in terms of uh, reducing emissions. What's your response to what the federal government is saying about your response? Well, then why did they surprise us? Why didn't they work with us? Because I, I think that there probably is a way that we can work together. The thing I always object to is that they just come up with pronouncements out of the blue without consulting with us and uh, then just expect that we're going to, to accept it. Uh, I mean, I don't announce policy in their areas of jurisdiction. They certainly shouldn't be announcing policy in my provincial area of jurisdiction and certainly not doing it without giving us the courtesy of, of a phone call about it. So that's what I object to, is that they, they constantly are announcing policy that they, quite frankly, don't have a constitutional authority to do so. And we could work together collaboratively, but uh, that requires a spirit of cooperative federalism as opposed to unilateral action. Okay, and in your statement earlier this week, you did talk about that constitutional aspect. You also claimed that this is a plan that would only benefit the environment minister and his, uh, what you call his post office career. So have you spoken with Stephen Gilbo in Dubai this week? Yeah, I have seen him a a couple of times. And I have to tell you, this is the the thing I find so frustrating is we could have come to Dubai in a a spirit of, of collaboration and talked about all the great things that we are doing together as a as a country and, and certainly in our province. We, we uh, discovered through many of the different uh, panels that I've been on that Alberta and Saskatchewan are leaders in carbon capture utilization and storage. We have a, a new carbon capture utilization and storage tax credit that I think is going to continue to accelerate that. We've partnered with the federal government on some major projects to decarbonize cement and petrochemicals and hydrogen. And so there was a there's a lot of ways in which we could have celebrated together the fact that we, we can work collaboratively. Instead, the, the environment minister has chosen to announce two unilateral actions with, without uh, without consulting with us. And, and that's what I find very frustrating is that we, we really should be uh, acting as, as Team Canada here. And I don't I don't feel like uh, like Kibo has come into it with that attitude. OK, just uh, let's just get some clarity then on this week's announcement on methane emissions and what specifically is it in that plan uh, that you object to beyond the fact that you feel uh, that this is outside federal jurisdiction? Are there, what are the actual uh, policies in place in those draft regulations that you're objecting to? Well, we have to know whether or not it's feasible. We, we, uh, in our plan, we were beginning the process of consulting with industry to find out whether a 75 to 80 percent target was feasible by 2030 without shutting in production. That's the main thing is that that we know that there are some very simple measures that can be taken because we've taken many of them so far. And so the reason why we met our methane emission reduction targets early by reducing emissions 45 percent. We were supposed to do that by 2025. We announced that we've already uh, accomplished that goal. And so our approach is working because it is a collaborative approach. It's a, a pr- approach based on industry best efforts. It's an approach that's flexible and it rewards innovation. And that's what we want to be able to retain. I don't know, quite frankly, what the what the federal plan is going to look like because they didn't consult me on it. Um, and if they had consulted me on it, I'd say, well, why don't you continue backing us in the approach that we have taken because it, ha- it has proven to be effective. That's what I'm frustrated by. Okay, now you are at this uh, worldwide conference on climate change in Dubai and globally we are seeing major oil and gas companies with plans to uh, get to net zero methane emissions by 2030. Uh, Some have talked about reducing 80 to 90 percent by 2030. The EU has its own law imposing uh, methane emissions limits. Uh, The federal government says these new measures uh, are in line with new American measures. So does not Does that not suggest, uh, I should say, that there is a consensus on this issue? Well, consensus or no, we are a federated nation, which means that we are not a a subordinate level of government to the federal government. We have our own area of jurisdiction defined by our constitution. And in our constitution, the provinces have the right to develop their resources, which means that the federal government cannot be unilaterally making any decisions that are going to impact our production. 
And we have to assert that time and time again because they keep on invading our jurisdiction time and time again, and they keep getting slapped down by the federal courts. And so um, we, we would be more than happy to work towards a 2050 emissions reduction target, set reasonable milestones along the way, but we can't have the federal government threatening to use the criminal law power and fine people and put them in jail for reaching, for failing to achieve arbitrary targets that they didn't do enough consultation to find out whether they could be achieved in the first place. But this is the, 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 the method of operation of the federal government, and, and we're going to continue to call them out every time they overstep. Now, you've moved to use the Alberta Sovereignty Act over electricity regulations. Mm -hmm. Will you do the same for methane? I, I want to continue talking to industry about what this is going to, to, to look like. I can, I can tell you I'm, I'm more concerned about what I hear is another unilateral action coming, which is a, an emissions cap on the oil and gas sector, which I think will be a clear violation of the Constitution. Because, look, I mean, they're, they're talking about having a cap on a single industry centered in a single province on a single issue. And, and that, to me, is a pretty clear definition that that is something that should be uh, principally decided at the, at the provincial level. So I still don't know what that's going to look like. Um, I, they, they said I could sign an NDA to, 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 to get the details in advance, but that's not the way our country is supposed to work. We're not supposed to have the federal government unilaterally making decisions and then us having to, to beg and plead to find out what the details are about. Are about. I, I think that cooperative federalism demands that the federal government take a different approach. So far, they've refused to. And so I'm quite worried about what that's going to look like when they do eventually reveal it. Okay, well, let me finish on, uh, on you with this then, because the federal energy minister, Jonathan Wilkinson, he also says uh, that there is no intent or, or effect of cutting production with this proposed emissions cap. He says it's going to be technically feasible, that it won't be tethered to global energy demand. What do you think of that? When they first announced it, they said that they wanted to reduce emissions 42% by 2030. The analysis we saw on that would have been that it would have resulted in a production cut of 1.2 million barrels per day. I can tell you with current prices, that would cut our revenues as a, as a province by six and a half billion dollars. That's about a third of our entire health budget. So you can see why I'm very concerned when the federal government starts making pronouncements and then tries to assure everybody it's not going to have an impact. The first time that they made an announcement, they blew it. And it was going to be something that was going to be very damaging to our economy. So I'll wait and see. But the point is, they, they shouldn't be making these unilateral pronouncements at all. They should be working with the provinces, especially with us, to make sure that we have something that's achievable. We've told them 2050 is an achievable target, and we're going to continue to try to work with them to understand the, the, the limitations. But we, we're, we're not going to let them take any action that will shut in our production. All right. Alberta Premier Danielle Smith, thanks for your time tonight from Dubai. You bet. My pleasure. Thank you.